hello hello i am back with another video and today we're gonna talk about anybody being sick around you we're gonna talk about sick people and how it's really giving you a gem in the biblical text about how to get them back in alignment with their selves since you are running a show in your kingdom god you have the power to manipulate the energy of the beings around you. So today I'm talking about a biblical text that says in so many words, it says, if there be anyone sick among you, let them call upon the elders of the church. And in the text, it goes on to say, and let the elders pray over them and anoint them with oil. I come from religion and I like to break down the biblical text. Not that I'm a religious person. I am only spirit, energy, frequency, and vibration. I don't subscribe to any religious man-made belief, like, right? So for me, for me, what that text means is if there be anyone sick among you, let them call upon the elder. Why the elder of the church? I look at that to mean let them call on someone who is in alignment with themselves. Let them call on someone who knows how to see things through the eyes of God. And this was what Jesus, the Christ conscious one, was saying in the allegory text. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and sin no more. It was really teaching how to embody being in alignment and your energy being so powerful that you have the power to heal people that are around you by seeing them through the eyes of God and help them believe. This is why it says in one of the texts, one of the people that was trying to get healed, he said, Lo, I believe, but help my unbelief right it was always about the faith it was always about being in alignment and further in the text it talks about praying over them prayer true prayer is when you are in alignment and you're using your human imagination to see that sick person as whole because see when a person is sick all they, the last thing that they need from you is be oh you, you look like you're not gonna work or make it oh things don't look too good oh i'm sorry that you're going through this you, the person that's sick, the last thing that they need is a Debbie Downer. The last thing that they need is somebody over them saying, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. What you think? What you think? No, because the person that's sick is already out of alignment. That's how they got sick. <laughs> they need somebody to breathe life inside of them. And breathing life through them or inside of them comes from you, your ability to stay in alignment to see them whole. To quantum jump there where they healed and whole and perfect and happy and joyous, maybe laughing again. And every time you're around that particular person, they need that. They, they need your energy. They need some of your life force because they are at their lower self. They are sick. And so this is how you pray over them, God. And so when you're praying over them, always seeing them well, always in alignment when you are in their presence, always thinking good thoughts about them. When you praying over them, in the biblical text, it says pray over them and anoint them with oil. Well, I don't believe that they're talking about olive oil like they do in church right so what if this person doesn't live in the same city you're gonna travel to this other city to go deliver olive oil and put a little cross on their forehead because you wanted to anoint their head with oil no it's not that kind of oil baby when you truly are in alignment with yourself you already naturally secrete this healing power you already naturally secrete dimethyltryptamine you already have the crystal fluid flowing inside of you from looking at them through the first eye, God. When you are truly in alignment with yourself, <laughs> you already have the manna from on high, on high. The manna from on high was symbolic to you being in alignment. That pineal gland open. This is the oil that is talking about. This is how you heal them. Because when you're really in tune with yourself, when you're in the alpha state of being, you naturally secrete the these fluids, secreting these fluids daily already. So the elder, meaning you, God, when you are in alignment, for you to pray for somebody, 
is for you to use your human imagination, seeing them as whole, and you hold steady to that thought. You milk that thought, and while you milk in that thought, that manna from on high is flowing, that crystal fluid is flowing through you. <laughs> It's the ability to keep this here focused. So then, so then there is, there is many, many parables in this biblical text that tell you that the Christ conscious one knew how <laughs> to stay in alignment. You know, some of the people or, you know, the so-called characters didn't know how to do this much. And you can tell by when the Christ conscious one went to go on, on the mount and he come down and the disciples would be sleeping like, right? Okay, because they couldn't stay in alignment. They didn't know how to stay in alignment, right? And so look, look, there was, there was someone, not only was he maybe sick first, but he died. His name was Lazarus in the biblical text. I don't know if you remember that part of the biblical text, but if I could remember that story, I know that he, Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha, and, and so the Christ conscious one was a, busy doing something that seemingly wasn't important to one of the sisters, and he was like, and she was like, could you please come? <laughs> my brother, my brother is dead. And so I guess when he showed up, he was laid, and you know, the rock was already on the tombstone, and, and one of the sisters said, if you would have been here, <laughs> if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> and so in this text, the parable goes where the Christ conscious one, being in alignment, knowing how to stay in alignment, he said, oh, no, 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 baby. Your brother Lazarus is not dead. He's sleeping. I don't see him at his lower self. I see him whole already. I don't care if there is a rock in front of the tombstone. He is alive. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> this is your superpower, God. To the people in your physical reality, when you are able to attune yourself to your human imagination, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what they look like, no matter how much they age, no matter how much weight they lost, you can say in your human imagination, Lazarus, come forth. I'm breathing life into you, Lazarus, come forth. I'm the elder of the church in this here kingdom. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> I'm not going to see you sick or dead, Lazarus. I'm going to see you whole. Because that's really what you want me to do for you. You want me to see you whole because you need my energy at this precious time in your life. You got on a low frequency. I'm attaining the high frequency. And if you know anything about energy, you know that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is simply transformed. So me keeping my alignment, I am transforming energy into you. Lazarus, come forth. And so people need your life force. Nobody needs you to tell them how bad things look. They don't. Everybody have, you know, they on TikTok, they be like, oh, I just want to keep it real. Baby, don't, don't come by me keeping it real. Don't you ever do that, keeping it real. Because I'm going to tell you, oh, oh, your, your energy don't match my energy. No, no, no. It ain't about this physical. Don't you keep it real. Don't you pay attention to the 0.01% of the physical when you around me. You carry yourself over there with that. Because I know that there's a greater part of me. There's a larger part of me. The spiritual essence of me. That's that 99.9999 that's running the show. So don't keep it real with me. <laughs> See the things that you want when you're around me. Because you ain't doing no good for me. You ain't breathing life inside of me. So if you ain't breathing life inside of me, I don't need you around me. I don't need you here in my kingdom because there's greater things that I'm doing. Greater works that I must perform here. So I can't, I can't have you around here seeing me sick. Feeling sorry for me. This is what sick people really are saying to you subconsciously. Where is your faith? God. That's what they're saying subconsciously to you. 
So why is it that we, being spiritual beings, drop down to the sick person level? No, no, no. I do consultations all the time. So people call me on FaceTime and they'll be crying. Oh, I'm talking about snotty nose crying. Then have rough times in life. That they went through the most pitiful stories. And I gotta listen to the story so we can get to the core of what, what is really troubling them. Because all this stuff stems from the spiritual first. And then it shows up in the physical. So I gotta get in their head and really understand how they're thinking in the spiritual essence to see why is their physical like this here. And so in looking at them in their eyes, crying to me, I can't be like, oh girl, please stop crying because I'm gonna cry too. Hell no, I gotta look at them eyeball to eyeball. And see them heal and hold already through their tears. tears. Look at them, quantum jump with them into the future where they say, remember that day when I called you? Oh, I was being so hard on myself and I thought it was the end of the world. And <laughs> I'm healed now. That's so funny that I went through those things. Remember that? And so I'll be able to say, yeah, 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 I remember. You, you needed me. You needed me to stay in alignment, and that's what I did for you. And me, my ability to stay in alignment and see you whole and see you happy again is the reason why there was life that was breathed back into you. Because if you pay attention to things in life, the little things in life, it'll teach you this, how important it is for you to stay in alignment and how, it, how easy it is for energy to be transformed. You ever been on the telephone with somebody and they started yawning and you wasn't even tired, but then you started yawning too? Like, oh girl, you got me yawning. You see? Because that's all we doing is transforming and transferring energy to one another. Don't pick up low frequency energy though. Learn how to clear that. Learn how to have an invisible shield over that. So when somebody is telling you some badass news, you can look at them and be like, baby, that was you yesterday. You healed now. And this is not something that you utter in your, ma in your mouth. You see this in your mind's eye instead. You see it and you hold that thought and you focus on that feeling and you see the gleam in their eyes that turned from that tear that's dropping from his eye and it turns into a gleam of hope. And then from hope it turns to looking forward, to smiling, to believing again, to love again, to laughter again, to joy again, because those people are counting on your energy, God, because you are God in your kingdom and all of your reflections need God. Hurting people in your physical reality need a healing God. And if you're God in your kingdom, you should be healing those people. Even if these people have passed on or have people that have already passed on and they call you or, or they're around you. And they can't get over the death of a loved one. The best place for them to still be is at their higher self. Because see, if you relay a message to a person that is hopeless, that is depressed because somebody really close to them has died. If you relay the message as far as that person that died wanting to see them happy, they'll start to think about that. And they'll be like, yeah, 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 my baby would want to see me happy. If you relay the message to them and say, you know, if you get in alignment, maybe they'll come and visit you in your dreams. That is hope that you embedded in them. That is life that you're giving to them. Oh, 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 if I start to feel good, then, then maybe, maybe they'll, maybe I'll get a message that they're okay. And maybe, maybe my human imagination will float into them being in my dreams to give me 
some kind of sign so I don't have to worry as much because people that I've consulted with that have loved ones that have passed away when they are not in alignment they never ever feel them they never ever feel their presence now this is energy too what I've noticed is for the ones that I say but he or she lives on with you energy is not destroyed so if you start caring about the way that you feel like they looking down on you caring about you and continue on with your journey when i tell these people that and they start to you know they start to get off out of the bed and they start to open up the blinds in the house and they done, they start to want to live again then they'll call me as eager as i don't know what like a little child don't you know that when i was in the kitchen i smelled my baby don't you know last night when I was in my sleep, my baby visited me and told me that he or she was okay? Well, how could your baby do that? At least you be in alignment. At least you had some type of hope or some type of life breathe into you because at your lower self, you're not going to experience that kind of thing. At your lower self, you're just going to be in pity and sad for yourself. And you don't get the good feeling type energies. You don't get the, the chill bump of a loved one's being in your presence spiritually. You, you don't get that, believe it or not. You don't have to believe it, it happens when you're in alignment. Now your pastor could tell you and you could look at the biblical text talking about the dead don't know what the living doing and vice versa, no, 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 all is God. You think, for one moment that there isn't nothing right here in this space right here you think that this is no thing baby if you do i think i think for you you need to come out of your limited box because this is a boundless universe just because you don't see it with these two eyes does not mean that it no longer exists remember we're using physical eyes 0.01 percent this is the vision spectrum we have but there is 99.999 that still exists. And guess where it is? It's part of your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind, everything exists. Because this subconscious mind connects you to infinite intelligence, infinite possibilities. <laughs> it connects you back home, baby. Home is where God is. Home is where all of your deceased relatives and loved ones is. Home is where every dimension, every parallel reality is. So we're really dealing with an illusion of separation when we look into these eyes. But when we look through this here eye here, we're looking through the eyes of God again. And we're back home. We're back in union. No longer is there separation. No longer is there death here. No, 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 no. It's just oneness. It's just God, one God, one faith, one baptism, life, purest form of life and living. <laughs> you know, like in the biblical text, in the, in the book of Revelations, which a lot of the church folk don't really know how to interpret. And he'll tell you in the biblical thing, in the biblical text, that they, 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 they <laughs> they'll tell you, I'll take the foolish things to confound the wise. They'll tell you, he who has an ear, let him hear. They tell you that it is hidden from some, so for, from some for a reason. Yeah, because they, they're not the gifted ones to be delivering the message. But in the book of Revelations, when they're talking about, and there shall then no, be no more crying. <laughs> they're talking about the moment when you get back in alignment with your subconscious and the superconscious mind, you talk about often the, the candles being lit in the bride's groom, right? Being ready, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, the marriage of your subconscious mind tapping back into your superconscious, you and the father being one, and you no longer walking around looking at sick people through these eyes and like, oh man, I don't know, I don't know if you're gonna make it because no, you, you ain't doing nobody no good. 
So this is what the world needs from you, God. If there be anyone that is sick among you, how about you, God, be the elder of the church? How about you pray for them using your human imagination, seeing them whole already? How about you use that imagination and milk it? This is where your ability to learn how to first know how to meditate comes into play. Because if you, if you can't hold a thought for two seconds, then God, I'm going to need you to learn. I'm going to need you to go on my YouTube channel and learn the different levels. There's a video called The Levels of Meditation. I need you to learn that, God. <laughs> Yeah, I need you to learn that for the people in your kingdom because maybe one day it'll be your family. Yeah, yeah, because some, some of the gods really only care about their little favorite five, you know, the people that live in a house. Yeah, some of you are, are not showing unconditional love to all of your reflections because everybody in your kingdom, whether it is your manager, the, the, the janitor, whether it is the mailman, all of them people in your kingdom are a reflection of you, God. So the foundation of you, you need to know how to meditate, God. Because somebody in your kingdom or in your house going to need you. <laughs> They're going to need you to breathe life into them. And if you can't hold a thought for three seconds, if you just scrolling through lives and can't keep yourself still on this live, then I don't know what's going on. Your imagination ain't up to par just yet, God. Mm-mm, mm-mm. If you don't know how to control your emotions, your energy in motion, God, I don't know. You might sit up there and cry with them. You might have one of them low frequency prayers like, oh, please, Jesus. Please, if you do this for me, this one time, Jesus, I'll do that. Da, da, da. Oh, no, those kind of prayers don't work. That's not the kind of praying I'm talking about. Ain't no begging. You quantum jump to that thing and have that thing right here, right now, because you're God. And when you wax God with your human imagination, ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> yeah, God. So the foundation of all of this, you need to know how to meditate. You need to know your ability to focus is so important. Your ability to control your emotions. You cannot be wobbling. A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Don't expect to receive nothing from God. You got to get your mind right. Because you are all mind, God. You're all consciousness. You are all in the beginning. <laughs> the darkness that was on the face of the deep. Consciousness. God in his totality saying, let there be light. <laughs> How did God, just like you, your so-called daddy, if you want to call it the daddy, the, the man upstairs, how can God say let there be and then it was? Oh, maybe God used its human imagination. Oh, oh, okay. So God used its human imagination, so to speak, its mind, its consciousness, which you are, <laughs> to create or recreate this simulated environment, this matrix, and said, let there be, let there be. <laughs> and then after seeing what it created, it said, and it was good. <laughs> so you have to use your human imagination, don't forget what you stem from, you stem from consciousness. That's all that this is. Everything that I see right now in my home is something that I thought up. If I wouldn't have thought it up, it would not be here right now. So I thought this up, okay? So this is your human imagination. Wherever you are right now, that's your human imagination. It's working for you too. Whether it's good or bad, you're thinking that up. So start to be accountable for the way that you are thinking, God, so that you can have the ability to control your human imagination and your emotions and see people healing whole already, see life as you want it to be versus how life is. And then you turn around when you receive your manifestation and you remember that you thought it up, you created the feeling of it, it works, you are master manifester, and you can say to yourself, 
and it was good. <laughs> and this here gives you the confidence to keep doing it over and over and over again. I don't care if it's somebody with a running nose. See that running nose dry up. Start now with little things, God. And so when people in, in religion, they be like, ooh, when you look at God. <laughs> well, my interpretation of the biblical text is that the kingdom of God is within me. And I say, oh yeah, look at God. And I don't extend that energy outside of me because God source energy breathed breath into man and he or she became a living soul. The kingdom of God is in me. So I acknowledge my ability to focus. I acknowledge my ability to control my emotions. I acknowledge my ability to be a master manifester just like God. And this is what it says and means in the biblical text. Think it not robbery to be equal with God. See, some of y'all don't, don't, don't even have no kind of way to think yourself. Because you're so on low frequency of what pastors said that you could not be. No, no, no. That You got to humble yourself. You're just a sinner. So you got to really get your mind right and your substance right that's up here. Because how can you just be a sinner? How can you be just a little G kind of God? How can you be just a soldier and a master manifester at the same time? <laughs> How can you be a healer and sick at the same time? You gotta make up your mind. <laughs> in, this, in this illusion of separation, you gotta, you gotta make up your mind. Because a kingdom that is divided against itself, it cannot stand. It cannot stand. Who gonna do the great works if you don't want to be accountable for being the person that's doing the work? So there are people in your kingdom, God, and they are waiting for a savior. And then you could you could you could sit here like Brummo and Great Brummo and then the great 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 Brummo and wait for a white man to come and crack the sky, God. But we are waiting for you to crack your pineal plane open. This is the sky, God. Crack the sky open and save the ones in your kingdom. They're waiting on you. For you to get your mind right. For you to not be wobbling. Oh, is this real? Am I going to go to hell? Is this blasphemy? Oh, I don't know. We waited on you to clear all that up. And put on the whole arm of God. <sighs> the world needs you. The world needs you. You came forward for this experience. You didn't come forward to work at that job. No, you didn't come forward to be a husband and a, and a wife. No, you didn't. You came forward to forget who you were and remember that you're God again. And along the way, you wanted to have some thrills and excitement along the way, and so that's okay. Don't forget what you came for, from for rather, because you, you, every last one of us are just the prodigal son that stepped away from all knowing, that stepped away from the love of God, that left the house, you know, left all his riches and everything. And you want to do it your way. I get it. I get it. Because you already know what love is. You already know what God is. You already know these things. You know. <laughs> but whenever you read it, to come home <laughs> and use your powers again, God. Your throne will be waiting for you. And the people that you need to heal, they'll be waiting too. Until your kingdom comes. <sighs> I know I missed a lot of comments here. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all. I needed to get that message out. Oh, that was a hot one there. Yeah, that was on my heart. That came to me while I was sleeping. 
And I'm so happy. Before I look at these comments, let me tell y'all something about me. When I was younger, I was in the church. That's how I know the words so much. And of course, I've had many, many lifetimes where I was in religion and so it's deeply rooted inside of me, like, right? And my mom, she's a minister in the church, like, right? And we always went from church to church. And, you know, I watched people that loved God so much hurt and be in so much pain. As a little girl, I was prophesied to many, many times about my calling. And I thought it meant that I was going to be a pastor or evangelist or something. Not, but I said, I don't want to be nothing like my mama. She knows it's not nothing I'm being saying that is ugly. She knows that I felt like this. Anyway, I ran from this. When I was a little girl, I used to get, you know, I'd be woken up in the middle of the night, sleepwalking and like, you know, cause I would hear my inner being calling me and being confused and so young, I thought it was like the boogeyman, like, right? But he would always call me and tell me, you know, things that I didn't, well, I guess I, other people didn't know and that I didn't know where it was coming from. That was kind of scary for me. Scary enough to, I, was a so-called backslider in church, you know, and I told my mom, I don't, you know, something's ain't right about the church part and I don't have nothing to do with it, you know, and, but I waited till I was like over 18 and out of my mom's house to be able to speak my truth. And I was just telling her, look, you just gonna have to respect where I am in my journey. She, um, and I stopped speaking actually for a little while because of this, because of our differences, because I didn't feel comfortable being known as the so-called backslider, like, right? So I went along my way and 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 I, I was thinking back of all the prophecies that I would um get in the churches. And I, so I, I don't have anything. What I'm saying is I don't have anything against church people. I just feel as though some of the leaders do not really know how to interpret the biblical text. I believe that there are some people who their third eye is open. They won't call it that. They'll call it the Holy Ghost. They really speak truth there, right? And so some of the truth speakers were speaking to me and saying that I would travel the world, that I would speak to others, that I'd have visions and, and um, I would uh, prophesy to people and stuff like, right? So that's really part of what my conversations is all about and stuff, right? And speaking here, right? But it was a point in my life where I didn't want to do this. I ran away from this. And it's something about having an experience with source energy or being connected or so-called having a calling on your life. It's like you can't run away from that thing, like, right? And so... I ran from religion and I pretty much ran into spirituality, you know, learning the opposite. And that was perfect for my journey, you know, to look at the other side of things, not with the man-made religion. And so in running away from religion, I wanted to do everything that the church folk said that I shouldn't be doing. That was a so-called devil, that I would go to so-called hell for, like, right? Because I was willing to take one for the team, you know? <laughs> I was like, well, look, I feel like I'm already going through hell. I feel so confused already in my physical reality. My life is in a turmoil at this point in time and space. So let me let me take one for the team. I want to know what, what this so-called devil is all about. I want to know what, you know, eating different meals outside of what I was taught is all about. I want to know what spirituality is about. I want to know what quantum physics, energy, and, and, it, and just the ancestors. I want to know about the Anunnaki. I want to know about Neturu. I want to know about the gods. I want to know about the pharaohs. And I studied all of these things, like, right? And I came to the greatest conclusion of it all is that it, these different religions, and this is just how I see, right? I don't want to project on you, but these different religions, they, they really separate us because we collectively are one. And so some people might have this belief on this side and some will have this belief on this side, but we collectively are like that battery. And a battery cannot fully operate, at least it have a positive and a negative. I believe that in the beginning in the biblical text when he was talking about biting off that seely apple, when the so-called serpent, which I look at as Kundalini energy, was saying, no, you will not die. You will have the know knowing of the knowledge of good and evil. You will be like the other gods. I believe that it's symbolic to the day that our Kundalini energy rises. <laughs> And we tap into our higher self and we realize that this so-called matrix is an illusion of separation. It seems really, really real because we just that cold with it. We just gods having a human experience. And of course, we're going to create a simulated environment that seems really real. 
but the Lord report of us knows that it is not. The Lord report of each one of us is like on the other side in this here realm right here where we don't think nothing exists. Well, the Lord report of our essence is there, right? And that Lord report of our essence <laughs> is in perfect alignment all the time. And the reason why we, I know and feel with my whole heart is because that Lord report of my essence has always talked to me when I was in that closet reading that Bible over 30 plus times when I was a little girl trying to understand the biblical text. See, I was a little, little sheltered, little somebody on top of being an introverted person. I'm still a little, I still say that I'm introverted because I enjoy the lonely moments in life because the lonely moments of life is where I met my God at. And so anyway, being sheltered was, was necessary for me. Being in church and religion, that was so necessary for me. Having a mother that brought me from church to church to church was necessary for me, <laughs> for my right now moment. And I know so hard, hard felt that the larger part of me is on this so-called other side because that used to be my imaginary friend so to speak like right you could think what you want to think about me but remember when you judge me you are judging yourself god so my so-called when i was a little girl imaginary friend we used to do some cool things with me like if i was out like you know like you know, in a, in a moment in my life, you know, my daddy, my physical daddy wasn't there. And so I used to while out sometimes, like, and try to get his attention. I was a straight A student, so I tried making apps, you know. I used to come home and clean my room and stuff, and I'd try to make it chaotic, you know, right? Or so sometimes I would actually try to run away. So maybe they'll call daddy, like, right? But anyway, I say that to say, any time that I was alone with myself and trying to rebel or do something, to get daddy's attention, this larger part of me that knows how to stay in alignment, that is like my higher self, my inner being, my source, it would tell me, go home. Everything's gonna be okay. If I was on, if I was in a bad neighborhood, it'll tell me, turn, get on this side of the street. It will wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me about somebody that I hadn't maybe saw at church or, you know, during the day, this person is dealing with such and such. It would tell me so many things about people, about my safety, about my well-being, about what I needed to do. It was almost like it was guiding me. But being that I was in religion, my, my parents and the older people, they was like, that's the devil. You need to stop talking to that thing, right? So I stopped talking to this thing for years. But this, this, this energy, this essence was still there. It lived with me. And so now, so, so for those of you who are trying to figure out where, why I come here with different random messages, you know, because sometimes we, we try to look at people like, oh, she going through this here? No, 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 no. These are not the things that I'm going through. These are the things that one of y'all going through. <laughs> and so I'm being used to, to help you on your journey, God. Yeah, because I'm just your subconscious mind. I just tap. You just allowed me to tap into your reality for this time so that you could get this message because you asked, you thought a question. And so I had to show up with the message for you. But these are the things I'm going through. These are the things that my inner being speak through me in my dreams. And they tell me, they show me how the life going to go. <laughs> they show me, me, already speaking it. And what it's going to do for the ones that it is touching. That's my gift. That's my gift that I come to give to the world. And a lot of people think, oh, oh, your voice. Your voice is so beautiful. I was talking to somebody late last night. And they was like, oh, your voice, man. Could you just record something for me and, you know, to keep me inspired, you know, so I don't go off on people during the day. Your voice seems so, sounds so healing. It's, it's, it's deeper than just the voice. It's just a gift that I've been running from that I was running from for a lot of my life. But this is how you begin to stop running. You stop running and this is how your inner being gets you to stop running, I'm gonna tell you. This is, this is how, this is how, if you have a calling, so to speak, on your life, you will get this intense love of God in your heart to do it. It'll be the very thing that you will do if nobody don't pay you no money. It would be like 
if you know how they say God is this big form of energy of love, like it would be like the door to God was open. And so nobody in human form can actually be in the presence of God's love because it is so powerful. It'll begin to feel as if the door to God's love has been cracked open. And some of the essence, just a little bit of the essence is just put on your heart. Oh, and when you experience this here kind of love, it's just like no other. And it is the thing that'll keep you going every day to stay in alignment with your true calling and purpose. And so this is, this is, this is why I am passionate when I talk to people. Because it is that love in my heart, it, it just been placed on you. And so now once that, that heart for your passion is placed on you, you ain't going nowhere no more. Nah, 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 ain't, you ain't about to say I'm done with this here. No, 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 this is, this is just you now. <laughs> this is you. And so that's me. I just wanted to share a little piece of me with you today. So that's me. That's why I come on here. To inspire your people, to inspire the gods, not just any people. To inspire the gods with that good soil so the message can take root <laughs> and they could keep on watering it and water it and it grows. And it grows so much that they begin to realize for themselves that they too are God. Having a human experience. I'm not here for the, 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 the Doubt and Thomases, nor am I here for the people that are already in alignment with themselves they know already and the doubting thomases they ain't they don't have the, the rich soil they have the soil symbolic of the the the, the seed that was that landed on the, the, the ground it couldn't take root because they were so busy telling me some, some doubting thomas type stuff it, it didn't take root but the one in between that has that good soil that's who these messages are for you know if you have good soil or not you know if you're just passing through here today or not but all of you collectively, to the core of you, know that you're God. Because God's essence, God's breath, God's life is inside of you. And no matter how so-called bad you are in this illusion of separation, no matter how so-called good you are in this illusion of separation, you are perfect and you are purposeful. You embody the totality of God the good and the evil, the giver of life and the one that take it away. And those that are in religion and only want to accept God as being just good God, just being love God, I beg to differ with you. I beg for you to one day allow for expansion in your human imagination because God is all. <laughs> God is all. Okay, let me look back at these here comments. And then I get up out of here. I got to go ship these orders. Thank y'all for supporting my um, my website too. Let's see. That's right. That's right. Yes. 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 I want to make sure I don't have any uh, questions up in here. Hey, Tanya. That's right. That's right. Talk about it. <laughs> hey, V. Thank you. Thank you, V. I appreciate you. You all over here. Energy is the new currency, baby. Yes, it is. Your energy. Good afternoon, my spiritual sister. Hey, Reese. How you doing, babe? Oh, they got a lot of comments up in here. Let's see. Come on. Bless you. Okay. Speak, my sister. Yeah. What's your YouTube channel? Is it my bio on um, TikTok? Soul of the Earth Publishing is the name of it. Hi, the archetype up in here. Hi, uh, Debra. Debra? Yes. She said, she said, uh, uh, coffee? Says woo. <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot. That's how I was feeling up here with that burst of love inside of me trying to deliver this message through flow. The promises of God. Yes or yes and amen. Yes, they are. Hey, Tia. Yes, they are. Hey, Samantha. And there, yeah. And it was. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, through human imagination, the ability to focus. Yeah, I love it here. All black lives matter. Yeah, I see you here, glory. Yeah. And see, even people that um in a religious walk, you know, you when you become conscious, because my mom, she's in religion, and she understands my language. And whenever she starts to speak her language for religious quotes or whatever, I understand. We, we really need to get away from judging people which path they take. There's so many paths, but we all go into the same place. 
We all going to the same place. Ain't no other place but back to God because God is all that there is. <laughs> Even for the people, hello to everyone that's watching and listening to this live alignment, but it's all here. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's only one place that we all going. Choose me. I like that name. Hey, shout me. I can't believe she's talking about imagination. My spirit had just confirmed this process to me. Yeah, because your subconscious mind is running the show. All of our subconscious mind. So believe it because when you ask through thought in your subconscious mind, it yields to you your answer. <laughs> That's why it tells you in the text to ask and you shall receive. But we all, back to my other point that I was about to make, we all are on a journey just to get a little higher. Even people that maybe smoke weed, people that are doing drugs, that are doing alcohol, that like to bungee jump, that like to go on drills or whatever, only because they're trying to get a little higher. <laughs> we simulate, this simulated environment is almost like a little bit of a separation, so to speak, energetically. But we all go home at night in a dream and a vision of the night when man sleep in slumbers. God putting them orders and instructions like, right? We all separate from the body and wild out back into our 99.99% totality of energy where our inner being is. Because we all want to get a little higher. So we go home and visit home at night. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. But everybody just trying to get high, babe. Hi there, and just came into a, um, a pressure message. Yeah, definitely. Preach. Somebody say preach. That's funny. Goosebumps all through my body. Yeah, thanks, Shelby. Wake us up. There you go. Up. Oh, them comments just jump. Can you say it again? What you're saying about the double minded man? A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man expect to receive anything from God. It's about being in alignment, the ability to focus, the ability to control your emotions, your energy emotions. See, in this assimilated environment, the reason why we go through those things where people try us and test our button, so to speak, is because we need to learn that. We, everything is purposeful here, God. You're only winning and learning. You might think it was a shitty event that happened, but no, 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 no. You needed to learn how to control the emotion why why did it take that relationship to happen and then you create another relationship like that to happen and then another because you had learned a lesson so when you don't learn a lesson you repeat it because you need to learn the ability to control emotions in this journey so each time, maybe the first time somebody hurt you, you were crying and rolling over the floor. Then maybe next time you just wrote them a letter. Then maybe next time you just shed it one tear. And then the next time you was like, okay, I think I'm going to be all right. Then the next time you just got in alignment and realized that, oh, I enjoyed this interaction with you. And I just look forward to what is to come for me. Because I know all oh, things are working out for me. Each time you were growing, God, and getting stronger and stronger, why did you need that strength, God? Because everybody in the kingdom is waiting on God. <laughs> it comes back full circle. Everybody in your kingdom waiting on you to learn how to control your emotions because in controlling your emotions, the ability to focus, now you can see them through the eyes of God. You can see them healed and you can see your life better and you can see things as if they are what you want them to be instead of what they are. It was teaching you that Hebrew 11 right now kind of fake, God. Everything is. You're only learning and you're only winning. When you gather that mindset, you get confidence in your journey. You learn how to enjoy the journey better. Because nobody is here in your journey that's going to come down to a low frequency place, God, and see about you. No, your God. Get off the ground and get back on the throne and see about yourself and save yourself so that yourself can be whole again and save everybody else in your simulated environment or your kingdom. That's what we're waiting on. <laughs> so you go ahead and learn all the lessons, God. Go on and learn them. Even if you're on a slow bus, get on a slow bus. But is, we all gonna get by. We go and get it, make it to school, slow bus or not. <laughs> we have all eternity. Yeah, 
grow with their maturity, with everything. Everyone we meet in our path is a mirror of our, yeah, of our current energy status. Yeah. Wow, your whole life, your whole life. So, so people be like, man, 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 it was a setup. Or it was a setback. But for something greater though, <laughs> man, he played me. No, 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 God. You didn't set up your environment to get played. You think your inner being, your 99.9% .9 of you that's with you, that guides you, gonna let you get played in an environment in an environment that you created how that go you can't lose the game god even when your physical body times out god you get, become greater and you jump into another realm it is never over till you say it's over <laughs> you got the joystick in your hand you got the power you are the juice but sometimes we just give our joys to here. Here, you do it, cause I, I don't know. Give me past this board. <laughs> and so that's equivalent to letting somebody else get on your throne. And when you do that, all hell breaks loose. The whole kingdom crumbles because they can't rule your kingdom like you can rule your kingdom. You need to be running this here show. Thought by thought by thought, feeling by feeling by feeling, spoken word by spoken word, so you can sit back and say, and it was good. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that was amazing. Hello, young lady. Hey, Purpose. Hey, Cassandra. Thank you for being here. Hey, Tasha. That was deep. Hey, how you doing? I have a glare. Figured out what the world need from you. Yeah, I love your truth. Yeah, appealing. So anyway, I'm about to end this. I gotta go ship these orders at the. Uh, post office thank you for supporting my website thank you for supporting my youtube channel thank you for being god all by yourself thank you for deciding to listen to this live because we need you the whole world needs you god we just been we just been waiting for your kingdom to come but when you really 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 it's equivalent to letting your light shine for others to see i want to see your light in your kingdom i want to feel it because energetically when you get back on the throne of god you make me better i rise too because energetically we are collective consciousness remembering who we are and i want to remember with you this video was from my heart to yours baby be blessed thank you for being here have a blessed day bye